In this video, I'm going to introduce crystal field theory, which is a model of bonding that helps describe the brilliant and wide range of colors that are seen in these coordination compounds and also the magnetic properties. So remember the metals that we've been discussing are transition metals and if we recall from an earlier section in chemistry, uh, atomic orbital theory, the S block uh, or an S orbital is spherically in, sh in shape and we can have a 1s when n equals 1 and then a 2s orbital so lithium's electron would go in a 2s orbital and since only two electrons can go in each orbital the s block is two atoms wide so to speak the p subshell or the p block remember the p subshell has three orbitals and they're all similar in shape but they are oriented along the x, y, and z axis. And if we label that x, y, and z, and there are six electrons that can fit in the subshell of uh, p orbitals, so two electrons in each orbital. I have a picture of the d orbitals because I can't draw those, but the transition metals occur in this region here and the D block has five orbitals and each of those orbitals have different shapes which I'm going to show here and two orbitals of particular importance are going to be the DX squared minus Y squared orbital and the DZ squared if we look at the difference these three orbitals they're all d orbitals, these three that each have four lobes. The lobes lie uh, in the plane and the shapes do not point uh, along the x or y axis. So that's going to be of importance when we look at the octahedral geometry. So if I could try to draw an octahedron from this, similar to this, the octahedral geometry that we've been drawing where the metal cation, I'm just going to put a plus in, the charge could be plus one, two, or three, or seven, but the central metal which is acting as a Lewis acid is coordinated at these sites as well. So the four vertices of a tetrahedron are actually shown here well, the four along the plane and then the vertice, this is the, this would be where the dx squared minus y squared orbitals actually point right to those vertices and then the dz squared uh, points at the uh, vertices along this vertical axis. So these two orbitals we're going to see um, they experience the most repulsion. So remember all five of these d orbitals would be around the central metal. And so if we consider more of a chemist's view of an electron as a negative smeared out charge. So if that metal's got the these two orbitals, there that negative charge is going to repel any ligands that would be attracted to this positive metal center. So let's say I have a cyanide ligand. That negative charge on the cyanide is actually going to experience repulsion. And what that's going to do energetically is cause these two orbitals to be higher in energy uh, than these three orbitals. So that is when we look at an octahedral complex. So the repulsion between the metals d orbitals, specifically the dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared, uh, increase the energy because that's not a favorable uh, 
That's a repulsion instead of an attraction. So even though those electrons on the cyanide are attracted to the positive metal, the nucleus of that metal, that metal still has these d orbitals that are pointing in the positions where those ligands will be coordinating the metal. So this increases, I'm just going to say an increase in energy uh, with respect to the other three orbitals. So we're going to see uh, on the slide in just a moment that we're going to have the five d orbitals for example with the free metal so the metal cation just in solution and then when the ligands are coming toward it we can think about that like they're sort of coming in for a landing on a spaceship but when the ligands are going to coordinate that metal that actually causes an increase in energy because of that repulsion term and when the electrostatic charges are attractive, that actually decreases energy. But what's going to happen with the metal's d orbitals is the three orbitals that don't experience the repulsion are going to be lower in energy than the free metal, and then the dx squared, x squared minus y squared, and the dz squared orbitals are actually higher in energy than these three orbitals that don't point at the vertices of a tetrahedron. So these experience uh, the most repulsion. So again, that's going to be a high energy situation. And these three orbitals experience the least repulsion from the ligands, and so they will be lower in energy than these two. If we remember atomic orbital theory, all of the d electrons on a free ion or metal have the same energy. So when we put electrons in, we would keep those electrons unpaired because electrons repel each other, so that repulsion, repulsion between uh, the electron, electron repulsion energy is the reason that it's more favorable for electrons to stay unpaired before they go to the next higher energy level. So that concept we're going to keep, and one of the things we're going to have to do is remember that the orbital split in this fashion in an octahedral geometry, so I should write that here. Uh, so this is an octahedral geometry, which is very common. And we're going to have to remember that the three orbitals are lower in energy, the dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared d orbitals are higher in energy because of the physical positioning of those orbitals with respect to an octahedral geometry. Now let's go back to this page and so we're going to be using the periodic table because if we have for example an iron that's in the plus three oxidation state that means iron loses three electrons and so we're going to just count over to see how many d electrons an iron plus three would have so we just cross out there's one two three electrons that are gone in an iron plus three ion and then we just count so it would have one two three or five d orbitals left. So we would say that iron plus three is a d5 metal. And if we do a quick atomic orbital diagram for iron, just the element iron, we know it's element number 26. 
we have the 1s, 2s, and 2p, then the 3s, and the 3p, and the trick here was remembering that the 4s orbital is actually lower in energy, that subshell is lower in energy than the 3d orbitals. So a sphere is, uh, that spherical shape minimizes surface area, which is a more stable shape. And remember, as we go increase in energy, we're increasing in this direction, the higher we go within, the closer those energy values get. But if we were to put 26 electrons in to represent iron, the atom, here's argon, and we fill the 4s before the 3d, so that was the trick on doing an electron configuration from an orbital diagram. And this is n equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know this is the 4s block. And the d's begin at energy level 3. So this is actually the 3d block. And then iron, there's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So iron, the element, has 26 electrons, but if iron loses three electrons to become iron plus three, the 4s electrons are going to come off first, so 4s are removed before the 3d. So we sort of pretend that we're in charge of putting electrons in their position and we're also responsible for removing them. So if we get rid of the 4s electrons, that's those two electrons, that's a 4s1, 4s2, and then one of these d electrons will be gone. And so we're in that position, and so instead of having to do this every time, we can just count over after we've eliminated electrons and count how many positions over we are, and that will be how many d electrons that that metal ion has in the center. And again, that positive charge is what attracts those ligands, whether they have uh, a lone pair or whether they are neutral, and, or whether they have a charge. Okay. So uh, crystal field theory, we're going to talk about I'm about out of lead. I'm about out of time here. So let me just grab a pen. Uh, so for crystal field theory, what's going to be important uh, for my students is to, uh, from the formula, from any compounds formula, and we'll do an example, determine the charge on the metal, so that is the oxidation state, and that will determine how many d electrons are gone, and so that will be the oxidation state. Then determine how many d electrons that metal ion has. And from there, if we have an octahedral geometry, we will just put the electrons in the orbitals, remembering that those orbitals split in energy. Yes, and so that's where we uh, lose electrons. Uh, then the splitting of the d orbitals and this is important this is in an octahedral geometry we'll talk about tetrahedral and square planar later but in an octahedral geometry we'll draw the 5d orbitals and there may be a very large gap or just a small gap between those d orbitals. So we'll discuss that on the next slide. 
So our particular chemistry book just calls this delta, but this is delta E. Now energy is increasing going up the paper. So the free metal, oops, the free metal is here. And then in the presence of the uh, ligands, so we could have this situation or we could have a very large gap. So I didn't draw that very well. Uh, I think I'll make this one smaller. So there may be a very small difference in energy. So this is still our dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared. Those two orbitals that point exactly at the metal's uh, ligands, the, co the coordination sites. So we could have a small energy gap, or we could have a large energy gap. And that depends on multiple things, but primarily the spectral chemical series, which we will look at on the next slide. Okay, and so if electrons, if there were four electrons here on the, if we had a D4 metal, for example, in this situation, the fourth electron would uh, be in a higher energy orbital. So I kind of messed that up by putting the label there. But the electron electron repulsions are actually greater than the delta E. So nature is going to always do uh, the lowest energy, most uh, stable configuration. So these electrons, instead of pairing up, because the electron, electron repulsion is greater than this energy gap, the electron, the fourth electron will be here. We actually call this a high spin complex. To me, that seems backwards, because, but that's because the electron is in a high energy level. And so we talk about the spin of an electron. If we have another D4 metal, and depending on the ligands, which we'll discuss later, these four electrons uh, would look would be in a different arrangement. So we call this a low spin complex because all the electrons are in the lowest energy levels. And what causes the difference between a large gap and a small gap primarily depends on the ligands. And we will look at the spectrochemical series and discuss that in the next video.